Hi, I am Dan Elliott and welcome to this video on spline mesh components. In the last video, we learned how to use splines to place meshes in our level. And we were using static mesh components to give our blueprint the ability to contain static meshes within them. Spline mesh components are very similar to static mesh components in that they give actor-based blueprints the ability to contain static meshes. The difference is that spline mesh components are able to be deformed. The simplest way to show this is if we create a fresh blueprint we'll make it actor based we will name this spline mesh example let's open this up and we will add a spline mesh component to this well actually first I'm going to add a scene component as the root and to that I will add a spline mesh. Now you won't see anything in the viewport straight away but if we have the spline mesh selected and come down to the details panel we can tell it to point to a static mesh and I'm going to choose this sm underscore bush. If we come to the details panel and scroll down, we can see that there's this extra section called spline mesh. And it might not look like anything's different, but if we look at the mesh and then start changing some of these values, we'll see instantly that the mesh is getting deformed. What's happening here is that the mesh is being deformed between the two start and end points. The start point is defined by this start pos variable and if we move this back in X we can see that the mesh is started at the start position variable and if we change this variable we can see that it gets stretched and deformed until it reaches the end position. If I set these back to default so that we can look at the mesh in a less stretched way, actually I'll keep this stretched out further in X. If I now change this tangent and make it a high value, we can see that the the direction of this tangent, which is a vector, is deforming the geometry in the direction of that tangent. It's quite hard to show without a curve in here to show the tangents, but what's happening is that at this point zero 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 in the world, it's using this tangent, which is a vector, and deforming the mesh in that direction. If I were to set this back to zero and then change the tangent at the other direction, this would have to be minus C, we can see that here the mesh is being deformed in this positive Z direction. I'm just going to set these back to default. We could, if we wanted to, use this as a standalone component in a blueprint and manipulate these values manually or with blueprints to affect our ge geometry in the scene. But as its name implies, we can use splines and their properties, such as their points and the tangents at the points, to control this mesh deformation. So let's create a spline component in this blueprint and see how we can use the blueprint graph to connect these two together. So now we have a spline mesh component and a spline component. Like in the previous tutorials, we can get information from the spline, such as the position and tangent data using blueprint function nodes. If we come over to the graph and come to the construction script, we can drag out a reference to our spline and get that, and also a reference to our spline mesh component, and we'll get that. Now what we want to do is drag out from the spline and 
we want to get some information from it, so we will type get, and in the spline section, we're going to want to choose get local location and tangent at spline point. This is a bit different from the previous functions we've been calling, in that instead of asking at a certain distance along the curve what its location is, what we're doing now is we're asking what the location and tangent is at the actual points themselves. So since we have a way to get the position and tangents from the spline, we need a way to set that on the spline mesh component. These are the values that we want to be able to modify. We want to modify them in the graph. And there are some functions to be able to do that. If we search for set and then come to the spline mesh section, we can see that there's a function for set, start, and end. And, and what we want to do is get the location of the point and set that at the start position, and the tangent of that point and set it to the start tangent. Now we still want to connect some data up to the end position and end tangent. So what we'll do is we will copy this node and we will connect the spline to the target and we will connect the location to the end position and the local tangent to the end tangent. One more thing we need to do is set the point indexes on the two get local location and tangent at spline point nodes. Zero corresponds to the first point index since splines use a zero index based numbering system for their points. The next point will be one and so on. So let's set this one to one. And if we connect our construction script event to the set start and end function and compile, if we drag this instance out into the scene, we should see that the spline should now be affecting the static mesh. And as we drag this point out, we can see that the end position of the spline mesh component is, is deforming that static mesh for us and the tangent of this point is setting the direction of the deformation correctly. So what if we had more than two points on this spline? If I select one of these points and alt drag out a new point, that changes what happens to our static mesh. The reason for that is because we've hard-coded this second get lo local location and tangent at spline point node to always get the location from the point with the index of one, which is always going to be the second in a, sp in a spline. To get the index of the last point in a spline, we first need to know how many points there are. So if we drag out from the spline and we type get we can see there's a function for get num spline points. And this is self-explanatory. It will return the number of spline points in our spline. To get the last index that we want, all we have to do is subtract one from this because it's a zero based index numbering system. So if we type sub, we will see integer minus integer. So we want it to subtract one from the return value of this get num spline points. And we will connect that up to the point index of our last end position. And we'll compile. And we now see that regardless of the number of points, the spline mesh will always use the first one and the last one to deform the static mesh. We can also see that as we move this middle spline point around, the tangents at the start and end points are automatically updating to provide a smooth curve transition. And that tangent is being fed through to these nodes and then onto the spline mesh component. This means that the deformation will always be pointing towards this middle point. If we come back to our Blueprint Editor and go to our Components tab and look under the Spline Mesh 
details panel. We can see there's a forward axis attribute. If we change this, this will affect which direction the static mesh will be deformed along. This way, we can orient our static mesh in any direction we want and use the curve to deform it in any way we want. So for this example, we could use a curve to deform um, this plant and have dynamic animation. If we add a fourth point by clicking this middle one and alt dragging out, we can control the tangent separately because the first tangent will always point to the second and the tangent at the end will always point to the spline point that's before it. That covers the basics of what the spline mesh component does. In the next video, I'll go over how we can combine this technique with the techniques used in the previous video and create a tool which allows us to create continuous repeating geometry to create content like roads and pathways. Thanks for watching.